if he is looking. Uh, Nath, he always puts the uh, marker there. Huh? He always puts the marker there. Who? Nath. What's a Nath. 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 Speaker. Oh. Nath. 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 If the mic is there. The photo of mic. Yeah. Can you check in there, Bola, please? Thank you, thank you. Do you know how to put on HDMI? I'm the IT person. Ask me, it's not him. Can you, if the IT guy needs to find the remote? Yeah, which is me. <laughs> yeah, I shall pass. Oh, I think a was Matthew in here yesterday? But the structure's Was in the corner of that Do you know going to volunteer some hot drink for me? No, it's okay. No, it's okay. We can. I can wait. I, I'll wait for you. Yeah. Someone, someone, Helen, turn the camera on. Well, it's not there. It's not in the doors. We check the doors. Nothing is in there. That's okay. Thank you. Okay, fine. You, you can it's use the projector remote. You can use the Xbox remote. PlayStation, no, no, PlayStation no. Can you not? Yeah. I checked both of them. Nothing's there. Where's Sam and Carlos? Do I have an app? Yeah, just, someone can just oh, download it for free. I'm cold, call call then. I'll call Carlos now. No, no, this is Tobin. Fish remote on a shelf, is it? Number one. Oh, oh, somebody just controlled it. Yeah, Terry found it. Thanks for your help, Stephen. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Oh, here we go. Can you see the top of my head? Yeah. The top of your head is beautiful. <laughs> I've got the lower. Oh, that works too. How's that? Good? He's happy with that? Beautiful. You're beautiful, I wanna Maybe maybe take the 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 door away because people come in and out. I want to look for bro. Thank you. Thanks for your input, Stephen. <laughs> Thanks for your help. We appreciate you. I've got the new TV producers here. Do you want to go live? Uh, I'm going to go live. Okay, sure. Okay. Thank you. Give me your help. Appreciate it. Thank you. Are you already live? No, I don't. Yeah, it is live. We are live? Yeah. Okay, let's teach. Tell us some jokes. First joke. Yeah. Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence, I'm already a king joke. Stephen. Thank you, Harvey. Different. Thank you. I'll try to make it uh, uh, short and sweet. Uh, so, anybody still uh, coming? Yella, yeah, Jonathan. Uh, we, we can't start without you guys. Guys, is Jonathan outside? No. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, tonight we are concluding the revival program uh, evenings of St. Mary's. Uh, fast and tomorrow is the feast so congratulations to all of you for uh, uh, on this occasion it has been it has been really uh, beautiful and uh, exciting to go through the different uh, speakers uh, that we had over the past uh, uh, four days and uh, i think you were exposed to a variety of uh, talks to cover St. Mary's uh, stories around uh, the nations. I reckon some fathers were uh, very uh, generous in certain uh, things, where some other fathers were very conservative when they uh, discussed with you this uh, topic. And I actually was expecting that, and I found it is necessary for me tonight to explain to you why I have chosen this uh, uh, theme of the revival program, St. Mary, around the, uh, the nations. Abuna Luke, uh, yesterday, two days ago, used this map and the next uh, map and the next slide that showed to us the, uh, the apparitions of St. Mary around the world. And uh, you can spot no uh, continent without uh, hair apparition, probably Antarctica is not uh, there, but uh, other than that, you have apparition of St. Mary in, in Europe. We're gonna see an enlarged uh, picture for uh, map for Europe. Uh, in, in, in Africa, not only in Egypt, but also in equatorial Africa, like uh, uh, Congo and uh, Rwanda and Angola, and even in South Africa. Uh, North America, South America, uh, Australia, New Zealand, Asia, and in Asia, of course, you don't expect China to report any, anything like this, but you have Russia, you have Japan, 
and uh, you have uh, Taiwan, Philippines, India, many other places that St. Mary appears. And to give you a quick idea, uh, this, uh, sorry, um, I need to use my laser. Uh, uh, this circle is a recognized by, recognized apparition by the Vatican uh, authorities. Uh, so you can say that uh, this is recognized, this is recognized, a few other places. The orange bus, uh, the orange only is approved by the local bishops, and uh, the cross is Virgin Mary's uh, appearance uh, to future uh, saint. And you can see a, a couple of the crosses, especially in the next one. And uh, the uh, the blue ones, which are the, the many uh, dots here, uh, are uh, apparitions are not uh, uh, supernatural, supernatural, have not yet been investigated or are under investigation. Anyways, uh, before I, I move on, I would like to uh, emphasize this area of the United States was not enough to include all the dots so they, they had to put some of the dots outside in the ocean there. St. Mary did not appear in the ocean, but appeared on the coastal area uh, there. Australia, we have many apparitions in uh, uh, Australia, including some apparitions in uh, Perth, uh, and including some apparitions in our church here, two individuals. Uh, we can discuss that uh, later. Uh, on if time allows us. The next slide is this uh, uh, an ex uh, exploded map of, of Europe or a zoomed in map of Europe where you can see, for example, Italy and France and uh, how many appearances uh, and uh, apparitions of St. Mary uh, has happened in uh, uh, Europe. And uh, those maps cover uh, quite long period of time. Again, the same thing that we talked about America happens here. Uh, our Lady of Zion, so many different apparitions. In Egypt, St. Mary appeared not only in El Zaytun, but she appeared in many other places in Egypt as far as uh, uh, Etfu near Aswan in, uh, in South. And uh, not all of them are uh, canonized or recognized by our Holy uh, Synod, but I have been uh, into some of those uh, uh, seasons or apparitions, and I have seen some uh, spiritual uh, phenomenon or phenomena in El Zaytun and in Edfo and uh, in uh, Baba Doblo in uh, San Damiana's church. And I can testify that there was something uh, abnormal and supernatural going uh, uh, on. So St. Mary appeared to every, almost everywhere in the world. And why I have chosen this theme, you will be surprised because uh, uh, it is more serious than some stories that we want to discuss about St. Mary's apparitions in the world. It is as serious as uh, we are preparing ourselves to the new world order and to the new world religion. And also we are preparing ourselves for the unity of uh, uh, Christians. Big words, probably you have heard those expressions before the new world order and the uh, one uh, world religion, and of course the ecumenical movement. So this is what we can uh, say about the new world order. Uh, and we are progressing very quickly, guys. So what I'm going to, uh, to, to talk tonight about is something that probably we will experience in our generation, not the next generation, not a few hundred years later, probably in our generation, we are going to experience these things as you have heard many things regarding the new world order happening now. 
Uh, this is the image that is uh, on the uh, American dollar. <clears throat> it has the pyramids, and the pyramid is uh, top of the top of the pyramid has got uh, the eye of Horus, which is an ancient Egyptian uh, god. I can say that Horus is the most ancient Egyptian uh, god, uh, together with Isis and Osiris. And uh, underneath here, you can, of course, this is Photoshop, Novus Ordo Cicloran, which means the New World Order. And uh, you can uh, say that the Eye of Horus uh, is surrounded with the, the sun. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the eye symbol is actually called the Illuminati. Bravo, Alec. The Illuminati. And this is what, uh, as Michael said, uh, probably you heard of the Illuminati. And the Illuminati is, uh, we believe, it is 13 uh, families around the world who control uh, everything in the world. Uh, they are the, the most rich or the richest people in, in the world. And they control the media, the politics, the banks, and every everything else. So. Uh, uh, this part of the pyramid re represents or resembles the Illuminati, which are, is these 13 families. And the bottom part of the pyramid, uh, each uh, level of the pyramid represents a level in the in, uh, Universal Masonite Movement or the International Masonite Movement. The International Masonite Movement, I understand it as 33. I may be wrong because it is not released much information about uh, themselves, but there are 33 uh, levels. And from here to there is 30 uh, levels. The 30th level is called Cain, and we know nothing uh, after the 30th level. Cain is the person who he killed uh, his brother Abel, the two children of, uh, of Adam. The pyramid is actually a symbol for the Masonites because uh, you know, you know, the word the Mason means uh, those who carve uh, uh, rocks and build things. So they took the, the, uh, uh, the pyramid as a symbol for, uh, for themselves. And uh, they believe that uh, the Masonites started as early as the time of the pyramid uh, uh, builders. Their movement started or revived in the 18th, 19th century, but they have been through the history of the world for a longer time. Than, than this. On the other side, I meant to put uh, this uh, picture because more uh, often than, than ever, now we hear stories about uh, UFOs, uh, aliens, uh, flying saucers, uh, lots of things in the TV regarding, uh, you know, those uh, freaky things like uh, Star Trek and uh, whatever the other uh, series and movies, they are there. And you can see that they have replaced the Eye of Horus with uh, a, uh, a new of all here and few other there. And why, uh, it is not a coincidence, but I think that the devil is preparing us to accept that uh, there are supernatural powers outside our world that we have to be to worship in preparation for the coming of empty uh, Christ. Any one of you guys have uh, uh, followed any of these uh, uh, media video clips regarding UFOs and, uh, and uh, sightings of uh, supernatural things in the sky? It has become very, very uh, prominent now in America and Europe, here in Australia, uh, and I don't know uh, you know, it is very now, as I will, you know, the so many nations around the world has dedicated big lumps of money to search into this phenomena and to do programs either to welcome those uh, aliens or to deter them from coming back. And yesterday or a couple of days ago, uh, I watched uh, a video clip by chance about some claims that the moon is uh, actually uh, a base for the activities of uh, the aliens. 
and they say that they have seen saucers there and things like that. So what is going on? What's going on is uh, that uh, the devil is going to overtake the new world order and we have to be ready and prepared for, for that. And of course, I shouldn't uh, forget here that uh, the, the beginnings of these things we started to hear like, we need to have a tracking uh, device so that we know whether you are infected or not to allow you in this room or not to allow you to travel overseas or not. We, we're gonna give you uh, the, uh, uh, the vaccine for the COVID-19 and with the vaccine, there will be a tracker and that tracker can be uh, scanned anywhere that you go and we can get to know who you are and where you have been and whether you have taken the vaccine or not. If you have seen uh, uh, China during the peak time of uh, uh, the COVID-19, probably you have uh, uh, observed the, the police uh, people would have uh, 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 helmets. And on that helmet, there are multi-sensors to detect who is going around uh, them and to check their temperature. And if they found uh, someone with high temperature, imagine that you are scanning all around you and if one with high temperature, you go and, and get, get him in addition to the uh, mm -hmm. Alibaba uh, produced uh, an app that, uh, and I have seen something like this here in Journal of Health Compass, that you have to type your, uh, your name and uh, if you are okay, then they, it will give you a green bar or, or not barcode, this SQ code, they, they call it the square one the square code. Uh, if you are not uh, clean, uh, you will have a red uh, uh, one, so you cannot cross from uh, an area to an area. It is uh, really coming into how to control masses. Of course, I'm not talking about the benefits or the uh, no benefits of the 5G, but 5G is introduced so that we can enhance the control of people and the borders between the countries and everything, because it will have to process, uh, uh, you know, everything quicker uh, with the speed of, you know, a supercomputer, which is built now, uh, supercomputers probably, you know, that uh, Google has got few of them, uh, Microsoft has got few of them, so they can process everything with the help of 5G in some seconds, and they can get to know where have you been in the last uh, 24 hours, for example, without having to spend anything. And they can crack and hack your computers because those uh, supercomputers will be able uh, to uh, solve uh, uh, logarithms and very uh, complicated algorithms very quickly to, to break into your computer if they needed uh, to. So this is about the new world order. And the new world religion or the one world religion, probably you have seen this uh, image uh, before. And uh, we call it in uh, uh, syncretism or universalism for simplified uh, version or uh, uh, conformitism, uniconformitism. But let us stick with syncretism because this is the most known word for it. And what the syncretism is, is uh, Buddha is uh, the same as Jesus, the same as Muhammad, the same as uh, uh, the Hindu uh, uh, prophets, uh, Brahma, and uh, the Bible is like the, uh, the Quran, like the uh, avatars, and you know, it is one religion after all. We all worship the same uh, super being. And this is being pushed very uh, hardly or very uh, strongly into the brain systems uh, of many people to the point that they produce songs uh, promoting the one world uh, religion and equating all the prophets with Jesus and everything. The one world religion would include Christianity in the beginning but it will be used to persecute Christians uh, afterwards. So again, we have to be prepared for this. Uh, I don't want you 
to, 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 to get uh, uh, scared, but uh, we have to be prepared. And this is the, the point of the talk tonight. The other point with the new world religion is the uh, separation of the state and the church is no longer uh, valid. Uh, yesterday, the United Nations, for example, allowed someone called Abdel Shahid, who said that uh, uh, religious activities, activities regarding pro-life uh, movements and against abortion and against same-sex are human rights violation. Imagine that me defending someone, uh, someone rights to live or babies to live is now human rights violation. And where, where this is coming from? From the United Nations. It's scary. Now we cannot say babies should live. This is human rights violation. We're going to see what's the future going to unfold uh, to us. And you know, probably in, in many uh, countries like Canada and uh, the United Arab Emirates, they forced the churches not to have communion. You can go because of Corona. You can go and pray, but you cannot. You are not allowed to have uh, communion. So this is uh, interference, uh, uh, severe interference with the church and religious uh, liberties. Also in, in Australia here, as probably you know that there are many states around the, the country and many territories have introduced the compulsory reporting of uh, any sexual abuse that the priest, the, conf the priest has received during confession. Khalikumai, be with me. You got the, this one? The priest has or is forced to report any sexual abuse to the authorities, even if it has come to him through confession. So the seal of confession is not there anymore, or the priest will be uh, persecuted. Of course, the priest, if reported, he will be excommunicated. If did not report, will be persecuted by the state. Where is this one? That is in uh, in Sydney, New South Wales, in Tasmania, in Victoria, not uh, activated yet, but it passed the parliament. And uh, in Queensland, did not go through the. Uh, it was not approved. Uh, this is up to my knowledge. Here in in WA, uh, I had to uh, write a submission on behalf of the church and behalf of the Oriental Orthodox churches, and I had to appear before. Uh, the committee in the parliament, joint uh, committee of the lower and the upper parliament of WA, together with the Archbishop uh, Timothy Costello, to provide evidence that this is not going to uh, to work. You can watch the uh, uh, the interview or the, the 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 meeting with the parliament on the parliament website, or when God gives me some time, I share it uh, with you. It was very good and very strong between the two of us. And they still are probably the finished hearing the rest of the organizations around the state to decide whether the priest has to report or, or not. So pray that it does not go through. How will the Coptic Church respond to this in states where it has gone through? Uh, well, you know, uh, we had uh, a previous uh, issue with the uh, same-sex uh, legalization in, in, in Australia. And uh, uh, Philip Traddock was heading this uh, you know, uh, community consultation. And uh, I had the, 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 uh, the privilege of again meeting him during that time. And he asked me, what do you think if the states uh, forced the religion ministers of religion to marry uh, same-sex people. Uh, I told him, look, you know, because he knows Coptic Church very well, he knows Pop Shenouda very well. I told him, you know we, we, where we came from, you know that uh, we are Coptic. And you know our history of bloodshed. We have sacrificed our, ourselves and blood for much less things than this. Uh, the message was clear that we are not going to accept any change in our morals or ethics or, uh, uh, or, or religious practices, uh, even if it had to lead to, to death. 
in, uh, in, in Sydney, they picked on the Archbishop, the Catholic Archbishop, because he said, uh, I know uh, or I understand that the priests would prefer to, uh, to die than to uh, report sexual abuse. And it was taken out of uh, context and was reported all over the media as the church is supporting children's sexual abuse. <clears throat> Uh, we, this is the, the world that we, we, we live uh, in. The state is trying to take over the, uh, the church again so, so that it will have a, a full control over the church and abolish uh, the, uh, the uniqueness of every religion, or especially uh, Christianity. Uh, the unity between the churches, I have shown this uh, 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 picture to, to some uh, of you before. Uh, this is uh, called the uh, Door of Prophecies, and it is uh, in the monastery of El Sirian in Wadi Natrun in Egypt. And simply, it is of the uh, 11th, uh, 10th, 11th century, so it has been there for uh, some quite a uh, long time. And here it, uh, it is the explanation in Arabic to the symbols on that door of the, uh, one of the churches there. The door is of two halves. The first row uh, is, uh, I would not go through everything, but this is the apostolic time. This is the persecution time. This is the Islam time. This is the Nazis time. Uh, this is the uh, ecumenical time. Uh, movement time, and this is when uh, the Lord is uh, uh, coming. So, uh, 10, 10, sorry, 1,000 years ago, uh, we someone prophesied regarding the unity of the church, and the ecumenical movement started probably, and it never stopped. There was always attempts to get the churches together. But it started with a strong uh, uh, inertia in 1930s, 1940s, and still going uh, till, till now. Uh, and uh, uh, the Coptic Church has very important role in this ecumenical uh, movement. But the question that I wanted to share with you uh, tonight, the unity of the church, the ecumenical movement that we are talking about, has caused lots of confusion around the Christendom and even in the Coptic Church. And it caused tension and rejection even in the Coptic Church. Why? Because some people believe that it is the way to go that all Christians should unite together. However, some other people believe that uh, this is uh, in preparation for the one world religion. <laughs> So when all Christians come together, we're going to be you know, swallowed by the other uh, religions and we are paving the way for the everything to come one. So this is uh, the thoughts of some very smart theologians and very well-educated theologians. On the other hand, very smart and strong theologians believe that we should uh, progress towards Christian unity. Personally, I have informed an, an opinion. But why I'm sharing this with you, because it is very important in the coming few years that you will see big divisions within the one church, like our church here, between the one church as, as say, the Coptic church, or God forbids, you will see divisions in the Orthodox, in the Catholic, in the uh, every other church because of this conflict or this tension between to go ahead with the, the unity with other churches or to back off because it is preparation or paving the way for the Antichrist. You understand the point? Hmm? So uh, I wanted also to share with you things about uh, uh, apparitions and miracles. Miracles and apparitions do exist in all religions around the world. All religions would claim that uh, 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 they have got some apparitions. Buddha would, uh, would appear to some people. Hindus uh, here in this temple are uh, 
collecting oil from the, uh, the, the, the statue. So miracles do happen. Miracles do happen in all religions. And miracles do happen also in all denominations. So what is the point that I'm, I'm trying to make here? That miracles and apparitions are not a proof of faith. They are not evidence that your faith is correct. You understand this very important point? Yeah? Uh, and not all miracles are divine. This is the second point. What do I mean? There could be miracles done by God, divine miracles. The devil also can do miracles. The Antichrist at the end of the days will sit in the temple and will get fire coming down from heavens. Wow, huge miracle, right? There could be also miracles, uh, we call them natural miracles. What is natural miracles? Like, guys, I'm talking. I'm breathing. You are breathing, right? It is by itself a miracle. We don't know how. We, we have just some guesses how we talk and how we breathe. But life in itself is a miracle. Giving birth to a child is a miracle. Dying is a miracle, right? They are all natural miracles we don't pay attention to. But if you pay attention to the, the, what we are doing day in, day out, it is just a series of miracles. And there is a fourth type of miracles that uh, the type of things that happen that do not have scientific explanation yet, but there could be some scientific explanation in the uh, future, right? So we have got four, four types of miracles, divine, devilish, natural, and scientific um, miracles that will be explained in the, in the uh, future. And uh, if, for example, we say that St. Mary appeared to uh, some uh, Hindu guys or some Muslim guys or uh, some uh, other denominations, this does not mean that this, their faith is good, is, 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 is uh, acceptable. Why then she has appeared to them? Someone might ask, right? Let me explain to you before I, uh, I tell you why she appeared to them. Jesus Christ and the Holy Family appeared in Egypt. They visited Egypt and they stayed in Egypt for three and a half years, right? Then visiting Egypt or appearing in Egypt, does it make the ancient Egyptian religion, the pharaonic religions are uh, correct? Not of course, right? But they went still to Egypt. God has sent a, a dream to the Pharaoh, telling him about the seven years of, uh, uh, of richness or, and, uh, and the seven years of scarcity, right? The, the uh, uh, fe feast uh, and famine, right? Uh, plenty and, and famine. Does this make the Pharaoh a saint because God gave him uh, these uh, uh, dreams? No. God appeared in a dream to the Pharaoh and to Abimelech in a dream regarding uh, uh, Sarah, uh, Abraham's wife. Does this make the Pharaoh and Abimelech saints? No. So visions and dreams and miracles that do not prove the saintlyhood of the, the people that have seen or that have received this uh, apparition or, or miracle. Any one of you has heard any doxologies or uh, a veneration to uh, an Amman, the uh, Syrian, that was healed by uh, uh, Elisha? Elisha healed Naaman, the Syrian, right? Does this make him a saint? No, still. So why God makes miracle to non-believers? Why Saint Mary would make a miracle to non-believer? Why she would appear to non-believers? Simply because God loves us. God loves us all. St. Mary loves us all. Whether we believe in God, we do not believe in God, he loves us. And this is a proof that, number one, he exists. Number two, that he loves us. 
whether we, you know, good or bad. He gives us, you know, fun rise to everyone, to the good people and the bad people. He gives food to everyone, to the good people and bad people, because he loves us. He is hoping that when he does a miracle or appear to someone, that this person's heart would, would, would change and come to, a, to, to, to the knowledge of, of him. The same thing, when St. Mary appears, it is a sign of her love to humanity, because she is the mother of all of us. If Jesus Christ is the creator of the whole world, and uh, he is the father of all of us, St. Mary, his mother, is the mother of, a, of all of us. Did I twist your, your understanding a little bit? So not every apparition uh, is a proof of the faith of the people. It could be true. She could have appeared in many places around the world, but we should not take this as, ah, they must be right. OK? We still, we still appreciate that. So divine miracles are uh, uh, evidence of God's existence and love to, to mankind. And also, they are evidence of the justice of God. For example, you, you remember the, the miracle of uh, Ananias and uh, Sapphira, Sapphira, who both died when they lied to the Holy Spirit, died on the spot. Isn't that a miracle? It is a miracle. It is a negative miracle, but uh, it is a miracle. So miracles of God also shows his justice. OK? Uh, OK, what is the purpose of the, then of the demonic uh, uh, miracles? They are to confuse people. And the, the confusion is in two parts, on, on two sides. The first side is, OK, they do miracles. They must be right. So I follow the, their religion. Or the other hand, if uh, the devil can do miracles, there are miracles in Hinduism and, uh, and Sikhism and all the other religions, for example, and Christianity claims that uh, there is miracles happen in, in, in itself as well, then it is all false. So we stop believing in the miracles that happen in, a, in our church. We, could you know, be more shaky in receiving the miracle from God's hand because even the devil does miracles. Understand this? So the, 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 the devil would always try to confuse us and make us doubt in the authenticity of the miracles that God performs to us. So my concern, or my concerns, First concern is uh, when we see this division happens in the church because of uh, the united uh, uh, Christianity or the ecumenical movement, and we become again more uh, accustomed to the new world order and the new world religion, the one world religion and all that kind of stuff, what would happen? We'll fight with each other. I am right, and you are wrong. You are a heretic. You are kafir, right? So we will lose our love towards each other, and we lose our love towards other uh, people, even our enemies, because I would want to prove myself right. I would want to tell them that you are wrong, right? And the, the devil was very successful in creating this lack of love in the churches across the world now. You look at what is happening in any church, you will find that many people hate each other because they are just different. Let alone if we are talking about other religions. When we talk with other people about our religion, probably we debate, we argue, we do not show love. Right? So time after time, that love would, eh, would be eroded. And Jesus Christ warned us against that. And he said, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Mm -hmm. Grow cold because I see two priests uh, are not in harmony together. 
two bishops are not in harmony, two churches are not in harmony. So they are the tops. If I see the stars falling, I would say, who am I to be you know, concerned or to love uh, my neighbor or to love uh, my brother? I would lose my, my, my love as well. And this is one thing I want you guys to be very aware of. Don't let your hope in any person, don't make your love revolves uh, around any particular thing. Let your love revolves only around God, okay? We're gonna be tested uh, to, 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 uh, to, the, uh, to, to the end, uh, to, uh, to the bottom, uh, to, to the last drop of our blood to lose our love. With this in mind, the time that is coming ahead will put us, you know, in a survival mode. Either I survive or you survive. Better I kill you. You understand? So the coldness of love, the lack of love is one big uh, uh, issue. The other issue that I'm concerned of is the confusion. Okay, what's wrong with this denomination or that denomination? We are all Christians. We are all we are all worship the same uh, gods. What's wrong with this religion or that religion? They are nice. They are really good people, nice people, decent people, right? Then we are going to get confused in this area, and also we're going to get confused in the other direction. Am I really uh, correct in my faith? Yeah, I'm. This uh, uh, flat in your head. <laughs> Uh, let go because nothing worth it. Uh, everything is uh, going to be confused. Everything going to be the same as uh, you know uh, the other. Especially with the rise of uh, the pseudo science or what I call the mythological science. Like uh, there once, uh, uh, one upon the time, there was uh, nothing, and nothing decided to become something. And the something uh, or that nothing exploded and brought everything into being. And we call this the Big Bang. And after that, there was uh, some mud. And the mud decided to become alive. And they became human beings. So this is mythology. And they claim that as being a science. This is mythological science. And everyone is putting the mythological science much ahead of uh, faith much ahead of religion. And if you do not believe in scientists, you are backwarded, retarded religion, uh, religious person. And they say it like this, you know, in, in your face. The third concern that I've got is the lack of faith. Again, the Lord Jesus Christ said in, uh, ah, for, for confusion, for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show signs and wonders to deceive if possible, even the elect. That is in Mark 13, 20. Lack of faith, uh, the Lord said about that uh, in Luke 18, 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Now, of course, you heard of Bill Gates and the, uh, his uh, idea of uh, you know, inserting uh, the microchip in, uh, in, in our hands, not only Bill Gates. Uh, I've watched uh, a, a video clip recently from one of the engineers who de designed the uh, microchip. And he said that there are 15,000 babies now carrying the microchip in their uh, uh, hand, or some of them are in their head. So guys, we need to eat. We need to buy food. I've got uh, my baby, I need to send him to hospital. I don't, I, I cannot do that without the microchip because if you do not have the microchip, you won't be able to buy or sell. This is the sign of the Antichrist. You can check that on Revelation 13. If you don't have uh, this, the mark of the beast that is 666, you won't be able to move around. You won't be able to put petrol in your car. You won't be able to pay mortgage. You won't be able to do anything. So some of us, us unfortunately, would have to bow down to the pressure and insert the microchip. God said, do not. 
because if you do, you won't have a place with me in heaven. You will you will hear that so many people in the church uh, would say, okay, what's the difference between the microchip and the credit card or the smartphone? It is just another device. We are confused. Go back to number two. We are confused. Across the churches, we, some of us are confused. We don't know whether this is the Antichrist mark or not. And some will take the risk because of the lack of faith that God will uh, look after us and insert this. So even if we doubt that it is not the, the, uh, the Antichrist mark, we should, I think, stay away from, uh, from it till things are clear, right? And if we have lost our faith, if we have lost our love, and if we are confused about our, our uh, dogmas and uh, and the creeds and uh, you know uh, church, then we have lost our salvation, our eternal salvation, our e our eternity. Uh, this is parts of the Quran where they talk about Saint Mary, and. Uh, I explain to you that St. Mary does actually miracles to non-believers. I, I know so many of them. One of them I always uh, like to tell is with a, a Muslim guy in Egypt around 67, 68. His name was Yahya. He had hernia and he used to, to uh, uh, mock uh, Christians and uh, blaspheme against uh, Christ. St. Mary appeared to him and did an operation for him, physical operation. Next day in the morning, he found the cotton and uh, the blood next to his bed. Noshko Rabbeinah, praise the Lord, he converted to Christianity and became uh, a leader uh, of the converts in, in Australia. He's now in Sydney and he is preaching and evangelizing. His name is Johanna uh, Neb. Why does she do miracles? Because she loves us, nothing more. Yeah? Because she loves everyone. Why God does miracles to everyone? Because he loves everyone, not because they are right. Be still this in your mind so that you don't get a confused. Uh, I don't have time for uh, uh, how uh, atheists and entities promoting uh, uh, similar, as they claim similar stories to the virginal birth of, uh, of St. Mary. You can check for yourselves on uh, uh, apologetic sites like Isis. They claim that uh, she uh, con conceived uh, her son Horus without uh, human in uh, intervention, uh, which is not true. And Mithra from Iran, the same thing. But they are all mythology, not documented. We have enough proofs that St. Mary is, uh, is different and she is an ever virgin. Uh, lady, the mother of uh, the, uh, the, uh, our God, and she is the immaculate uh, mother, or she had him uh, in immaculate conception. My conclusion is, regardless of what's going to happen to us, the coming time is not going to be an easy one, especially the last three and a half years when the Antichrist uh, appears and take control of the world. He is not going to play cards with us. He's not going to entertain us, especially Christians. So be prepared for that. Before this three and a half years, there will be another three and a half years before his appearance. That will be very hard and tough. And we are getting there very quickly. This is my, I wouldn't say uh, my belief, but this is my intuition. This is uh, my expectation. This is what I feel going on, because there are so many proofs around us. You will find people promoting this as a conspiracy theory. It is not a conspiracy. It is not a theory. It is happening right around us. And if you check credible uh, uh, sites and information regarding this, you will get to yourselves certain that it is not a conspiracy uh, theory. Nevertheless, Never fail on your love. Love your enemies. Love your brothers and sisters. Love your church. Love your uh, fathers. I, I, I mean, even if you see me 
getting into an argue with another uh, father or with another bishop, or you see two bishops arguing with, with each other. Don't let your love go down. Let your love step up. Pray for everyone, pray for us, because some of us are confused. Not some of us, many of Christians are confused. I'll give you an example. The ex, ex Pope, uh, Jean, Jean, Paul, Jean Paul II. Of course, again, I'm talking with love, I'm not talking to discredit anyone. John Paul II went to a, a Hindu temple and uh, the Hindu female servants, they normally dance in their uh, temples, uh, asked him to uh, lower his head. So he lowered his head before her and she anointed him with their holy oil. Okay. When he visited Egypt, Sheikh Al-Azhar, the Azhar uh, highest uh, cleric, offered him a Quran. He took the Quran from his hands, kissed it, and put it on top of his head. Well, he is confused. In Vatican II, the Council of, of the Catholic Church in 1961-1962, they introduced a new concept that uh, that concept is called the general salvation principle or the general salvation concept what is that concept it says that everyone would be saved whether you are christian or jew or muslim or buddhist or hindu or uh, sikh or whatever and how is that because muslims and jew and jews worship the same god of christian of christianity that is allah or yahweh Elohim. Buddhists, Hindus, Sikhs, and the others worship God in his images, likenesses, and uh, shapes. So they still worship him in some way or another. So everyone would be saved. You see? And I'm talking about a very highly respected, uh, the uh, highest head in the Catholic Church. If the highest head in the Catholic Church and if the Synod of the Catholic Church, with all due respect, I'm talking in humbleness here, are confused. So poor are you guys to hear this and say, okay, everyone is like the other. Everyone is going to be saved. So back to the idea of unity between the churches. Should we go ahead in unity or should we back off? Should we compromise our faith for the sake of love or should we, you know, caution? And this is the second point that I want to, 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 to raise with you. We have to be very cautious in accepting anything, any teachings, any dogmas. You have to stick very strongly uh, and adhere to your teachings, to the, to, to the teaching of your Orthodox Church. If we are going to have unity with other churches, very good, but not on the expense of the dogmas. We can do things together. Like, for example, I went with the Archbishop of the Catholic Church and defended the seal of confession. This is, yes, and we were united front in front of the parliament. This is okay. We can go down in the streets and serve homeless or sick people and help others as human beings, as brothers and sisters in, in humanity, in Christianity, whatever. But this is as far as we can go. Sometimes people will say, Abuna, I'm marrying a Catholic guy, or I'm marrying a Catholic girl. What's the difference? We're going to have the wedding here and the wedding there. Or can Abuna from the Catholic Church come and attend the uh, the, the wedding and co-celebrate co or concelebrate uh, with us. Really, I, I, I am put in very awkward situations sometimes because my love to you guys, I want you to be very happy, but at the same time, I cannot compromise the, uh, the faith. Marriage is like communion, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The sacrament of matrimony, 
is equal to the sacrament of Eucharist. If I do not have common communion, if I cannot have communion with other churches, then I cannot have any other sacrament with other churches. Okay? Again, I'm making things harder for some of you guys, but uh, this is reality. Otherwise, we're going to get into a, this confusion that we, uh, we talked about. The last thing is wisdom. We don't want to, to lose anyone. We don't want to offend anyone. We have to express every love that we have got to everyone. Mm -hmm. And when we have this wisdom, we're going to you know, be able to attract them or at least not to, uh, to, to, to lose them. Where to get wisdom from is from the Lord, the, uh, the Father of, uh, of the light, and he gives everyone in abundance without a measure. So we need to pray more for, uh, for wisdom, especially at your young uh, ages, so that you can, uh, when you grow up, you can be more uh, wise. Glory be to God forever and evermore. Amen. Happy to have any uh, questions from you guys. Any questions? Confused you to the point to the uh, yeah, any limits? It's a very heavy topic. Um, the, I guess one more question. Very, very tough question. Ask God. However, is this in Australia, by the way? No, in America. In Australia, we have few people in Victoria. One of them appeared in a TV program with five microchips in, in his hand. This one is to open the car. This one is instead of uh, the something like this. And there are two uh, doctors in, uh, I think, Monash University, female doctors who have inserted the microchip as well. Switzerland. Uh, things are sweeping there. Uh, many people there have inserted the microchip. So yes, it is uh, getting the, the normal now. Yeah. So the babies that uh, are injected by the microchip. It is the same story of what about babies who are not uh, baptized? Same theology. <clears throat> the best answer to this is uh, we don't really know God's wisdom and God's justice. But what, what we understand is that uh, their parents have responsibility and liability over them. This is one thing. The other thing is uh, heavens is uh, multiple uh, levels and mansions, different mansions. Hell is the same thing, multiple levels and mansions. Not mansions, I don't know that. Like in uh, uh, what I meant to say, some people would not be in heaven, but not tortured, not, you know, uh, but they cannot see the light because they have not been baptized. This is as much as we can go uh, by, but how God is going to judge this, it is not my place to say that. Is, is the Catholic going to heavens? Is the uh, Muslims going to heaven? It is up to him to, uh, to, to, to judge. But I have to be sure that I'll be going to heaven because this is my faith. I wish and I pray for every other person, person to go to heaven through God's grace and God's mercy. Like in his justice would have a different... Maybe some of us would not reach there. So why should I be concerned over Others, I'm not concerned over myself. Right? Questions? Steve. Spit it out. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, technology, how, how do you know? Any, I, I would feel like it's too easy to get, you know, trapped into something. Or, yeah, like, it seems impossible to, to, to if whatever's about to come, 5G or whatever. Yeah. 
Yeah, it is. Uh, no, it's not impossible. It is a reality that uh, 5G is coming on us. It has been installed in so many areas in Australia. It has been installed in in uh, Europe, uh, in America. So it is a reality in uh, in China. So it is a reality. How to survive and how to live with it is a different story. How to use it? We said the same thing about TV and, and more telephones, and we demonized TVs when they came uh, first time, but we use TVs now, right? How to use a 5G, how to use other technology, it's up to us. But one of the purposes of introducing mm -hmm. the 5G is to make the supercomputers workable. Right? Are we going to use 5G? Yes, of course. Probably the church will be the first one to implement the 5G plan in, in, in here. Technology is not right or wrong. Technology is how you use it. Right? Other question? Um, do you know how, like, World War II and, like, Hitler's rising and everything, do you think people and, like, the church would thought that was anti Look, the idea of the Antichrist started from the first century. And you can see the first Antichrist spoken about in the first and second Thessalonican uh, epistles of St. Paul. Uh, the Thessalonican people thought that Christ is coming uh, soon. And uh, they uh, sold everything and get, uh, got prepared for the second coming of Christ. So St. Paul wrote to them the second epistle to tell them that uh, we have to have uh, many things to happen before the second coming of, uh, of Christ. And he talked about many antichrists to, to, uh, to have to appear and things like this. So it is not one antichrist. We have to understand that. It's going to be many antichrists. Uh, we have seen many of them throughout history, but there will be the one unique antichrist at the end of the time. That is the devil uh, or Lucifer himself. Okay. So in every generation, people believe that this is the end of times and this is the end of, uh, you know, uh, humanity and uh, the antichrist is coming. World War I, people thought of that. World War II, the same thing. 2000, they thought of that. Uh, some people went to the extent that they decided or they defined when is the uh, end of uh, or the year or the date of the end of the times. Uh, and that was uh, a very sneaky way from the devil to make the issue, uh, you know, uh, Lukewarm, Maya, yani, uh, not not uh, important. Now you have said this hundreds of times before that Christ is coming, and this is the end of the days. So when the time comes, no one would be uh, serious about it. Okay. Why we have got this uh, belief or this uh, expectation that this could be the one. <coughs> because of so many uh, things going around us. It is not just one war here or one war there, even if it is the uh, World War One or two. It is the multiple things that the Lord talked about. Multiple things. Uh, tensions around the world, wars and uh, rumors of wars. Uh, you can uh, testify uh, to that. Plagues. Uh, Earthquakes, if you look at the uh, graph of any uh, uh, earthquakes throughout history, you would see that earthquakes for the, in the past hundred years, for example, uh, they recorded earthquakes before them, but you will see that earthquakes are going like linear, and then suddenly it takes a logarithmic uh, curve upwards to so the number and the intensity of earthquakes and volcanoes are logarithmic uh, now not because we are measuring them, but because they have increased. Uh, it, Jesus said that uh, uh, knowledge should be everywhere in the world, and 
and uh, now the knowledge is huge. And we are not saying that knowledge cannot, cannot be more, knowledge can be more. Mm -hmm. But again, compare the knowledge that we developed in the past 70 years to the knowledge that uh, humans produced in the past 3,000 years. Again, complete different story, right? Uh, probably in the, in the, uh, in the 50s, and uh, the 40s, if you wanted to pass a message, you will have to ride the camel and send the letter over a camel, right? But now the answer comes back to you before you send the, the email or the text. It's completely different, you know, uh, uh, story. Uh, also, uh, the Lord said that the word of God would reach every spot in the world. And now the word of God in everywhere. North Korea, you have Christians there. China, you have Christians there. Saudi Arabia, the word of God is there. So the thing is prepared. The word of God has reached everywhere in the, in the world. What else can I talk? He talked about the uh, the mark of the beast in the in the hand or the, on the on the head. Now, engineers who developed this come out and talk about how they spent millions of dollars to find the the the, the, the best spot in a human body to insert this thing. And one of them said that uh, they wanted to create energy from the body so that the lithium battery in the microchip should work, should be recharged. And they gave it to several groups of uh, researchers to find the best spots uh, in the body. And the researchers, different uh, independent researchers, came back with only two spots, the hand, this area here, and this. And they said we could have asked the mothers and saved these millions of dollars, because every mother knew that this uh, uh, area is where to, uh, to measure the temperature for her the child. What these areas happen, uh, or, or what happens in these areas, is the temperature drops quickly and raises quickly, not like any other place in the, in the, uh, in the body. And because of the variation in the temperature, then the, the lithium battery would be charged because there is uh, you know, this, uh, what they call it, a thermal uh, drop or whatever the expression is. Mm -hmm. For many things in, around us tells us that it could be the last one. It could be the last one. Now, look at the, 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 the uh, same-sex marriage and the gender fluidity and uh, uh, abortion and all that anti-life things that we witness. It's again a sign that the, the devil is paving his way to come. Okay? But don't quote me. It could take another couple of thousand years. But for us, we have to be better prepared. It seems that we are approaching a very tough time. Should we keep silent or we prepare ourselves? This is the point that I'm trying to, to share with you. Any other questions? Shady. Shoot it. Shoot it. <laughs> I, I shared you will always uh, or would always be uh, spec uh, skeptical about things, but uh, I'm sure that uh, he wouldn't be much, you know, opposing to the general idea of being prepared, right? <laughs> Anything else? Thank you very much for Medhani. Uh, 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 sorry, I, I don't know how to put the question up on that, but there's a confusion on the, the shared, um, well, every religion, uh, every denomination, they, they, they say it's, it's um, our way is the right way. Um, so, it all comes to Jesus on the judgment day. Uh, but how would you communicate, not mentioning, let's say, um, our way, the, the Coptic way, the Rebecca way, not mentioning that, how would you communicate with the others? It's not about your way or my way. 
how would you communicate that uh, conclusion? Yeah, look, orthodox means truth, truth or straight line, straight way, right? However, to be orthodox, you have to be very humble and very loving. It's not about fighting with others. It's not about supremacy. I'm better. I'm, uh, I'm the most, uh, you know, uh, the best faith. No, it is I love you very much. It is I respect you very much. I'm very humble with you. I'm not arrogant when I talk with others. Okay? When we establish this, and we are genuine in this, we don't need to tell them that we are more correct than them. Yeah. You see? And when they ask you, as St. Peter says, responds in humility and in love about the mystery of hope that you have. Right? It is not a theological debate, as some people would like to put it. It is a, a, a spiritual uh, attraction. Theological debate might come later on if they wanted to know more about your faith. And I think, uh, again, and when I say that, I do not mean to undermine the faith of others. Why I'm saying this? Because we have to differentiate between theologians who knows or who know everything and lay people. Like uh, there are very saintly people in every uh, Christian de denomination. I cannot deny this, but they are not theologically equipped to know what are the differences between this and the and that. Uh, there, there are saints, and, but there are saints in, within their denomination. You see, and we have to deal with them, even the current living people, as the, they are saints and they are better than us. You understand where I'm coming uh, coming from, and, and then we can explain to them about our very wealthy uh, dogmas and traditions, and and uh, 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 probably you heard me, like for uh, discipleship, the Anglican Church does not recognize monasticism. Right? You don't have monasticism. But when you attract an Anglican person to orthodoxy, you wouldn't ask so many questions about monasticism or this or that. They will join the faith first, and then slowly, slowly, they will grow in understanding. And what attracts people to the faith? It is not the sound dogma. It's not the right dogma. It is the love of people. Right? The genuine love. Makes uh, sense? Questions? Or let you go to have uh, something to eat and sleep? Right. Amen, alleluia, duxa, patrike. King of peace, grant us your peace and forgive us our sins for the time of the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, this is the truth and can say, O God, O Amen. 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 Amen.